Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I had some friends who were making these projects called Loaded Bags and Loaded Envelopes. Hi Tracy and Cindy, totally want to let you know you guys inspired this project. Um, and I wanted to give it a try and I wanted to make something that would kind of be like a Halloween favor that you could give to friends maybe that you were scrapbooking with or crafting with and then they could take the pieces apart and use it on their uh, scrapbook pages for the event because I mean a lot of us have kids that are still trick-or-treating and I thought this would be kind of like a cool embellishment if they took it apart after they got it. So what I have here is just a glassine bag and uh, I had that's I just happen to have it you could use whatever you wanted and then um, I took another bag and altered it and just made this kind of little like little card with a little pocket so you could put like journaling in if you put them on a scrapbook page and then this comes out and then you could obviously journal on that or you could like write a message in there like happy Halloween or something I just like the idea of these little pockets that could be used as embellishments on like a scrapbook page or project life page kind of get a little craftiness in there or you know use this as a bookmark I don't know I just thought it was kind of cute and um, I was really enjoying seeing what my friend Cindy and Tracy were doing so we're gonna use some supplies that I've had kicking around for a while some new stuff and also some stamps from our sponsor rubber stamp tapestry all these cute little designs are from their peg stamps and you can find them at pegstamps.com and check out the video description for a coupon code to save 20% on your stamp order so let's get to it first thing we're gonna do is grab some dies and um, so I thought these were gothic arch dies and that's what they look like to me but somebody had left a comment last week saying oh I love your banner dies and I'm like oh if I turn around they're banners so yeah I'm a dummy but uh but hey they're arches or banners and we're gonna use them for both today so I grabbed a couple sizes this one we're going to use for banners and this one we're going to use for the base of our card but we're gonna do a little fancy folding to get a cool um uh to get our card and this paper is some of the stuff I showed you from AC Moore I thought it'd be really nice to use for this project maybe I'll use this one here so if your paper has a direction like this does you have to make sure that you have it um, um, your right side up you want to cut it with like the top of the, the paper pointing towards the arch so what I'm going to do is basically fold this so that it's going to fit inside of my arch so what you can do is just kind of like eyeball it and then make a couple little marks with a pencil or a pen or you could just kind of um, you could just kind of you know score it on the scoring board and kind of keep that in mind I'm just gonna make a couple little marks there and then take it to my scoring board and score it so I can get this to fold up so when I die cut it I'm gonna end up with a gatefold card so I just pressed my like scoring tool down on the um, line and then I just dragged up and down on my score pal so you can kind of see I have those two score marks and the reason I did it on the inside of the the thing is because that die actually falls in between the uh, width and you can do this for any shape really it doesn't have to be an arch it could be a square or an oval or whatever and you can do that same sort of technique to get a gatefold so or you could use a bigger piece of paper if you wanted the sides to meet but um, but I just want to use what I had because you know I had it so now what I'm gonna do is put this paper down now this does have a little tear off strip so you know I don't want to cut into that part because that would have like a little perforation on it so I'm gonna make sure the tip is just below that I'm just gonna kind of line it up in there so it's fairly symmetrical and I'm just gonna tack it down with a little piece of washi tape so it doesn't move while it's going through the die cutter I'll actually probably cut this with my magnetic platform but I like the washi tape tip so if you don't have a mag magnetic platform you know you can still keep it in place while you crank it through and I'll be back after I do that okay so I cut this out look how nice it turned out came out really well and you got a great little gate gatefold a little bit of a gap but we're gonna dress that up with some washi tape I got these little banner pieces because I felt like the banner that I made on the other card like kind of faded away and so I cut it out of this paper and what I would do is I would just put my little die um, I would get one of the little faces up at the top so that when I did my little peg stamping I could have a little stamped element at the bottom and it would um, and it was also show those really wacky um, pumpkin faces really well and um, then I took this die here and just cut this out of peach and I know you don't really think of peach as a Halloween color but it's really good as far as like accenting other oranges and colors like that so it's kind of like a neutral color that's going to be a nice nice spot for your eyes to rest and for you to be able to write on so that's what we're doing for die cutting um, I took this big die that I used for this and I cut out a middle piece so I could line the inside of my gatefold and now I just need to trim it down to fit so you can see I need to I need to trim off um, about like I don't know I'd say about an eighth of an inch from each side so I'm just gonna mark that with my silver gel pen 
because that's pretty easy to line up like that. And then I will need to chop off a little bit on the bottom. So I'm just gonna trim that off with my scissors. You could do that with a paper trimmer if you wish. When you trim it off though, go within a little bit, like go just a, like a hair inside of that line because you uh, you trace the outside of the folded gatefold. So if you don't go within the line, it's not gonna fit right. It's going to you know prevent it from closing really well. And if your cutting isn't that great, you can always ink the edges a little bit and it'll be fine. So see, there we go. In fact, you could even like, you know, take a little bit more off if you think. I think that's that's just about perfect or I might even want to slide a little bit off. So that's good to glue down right now. I'm just going to use my double-sided adhesive here. And I mean, this is one of those projects where you look through your stash and you use what you have and just, you know, you're making a goodie for a friend, basically. I think it's, I think it's a lot of fun. Now I'm going to set these aside so I don't lose them. Um, I was kind of bummed that a six by six paper wasn't quite big enough for the gates to, to connect, but then I realized that I think it's an opportunity to be able to see some other layers and I thought it looked kind of cool. So what I'm going to do here is take this narrow washi tape and um, this is a great way to use some solids. It doesn't have to be a Halloween themed product. You can just use something that is, um, you know, orange or black or purple or whatever you like to use for Halloween. And the other nice thing is you can use those kind of like half used up packages of embellishments and, you know, things like that. And yours isn't going to look the same as mine. We're all going to have different supplies to use. So it's going to like kind of show a little bit of our personalities in our projects too. And just trim off the excess. Okay, now we're going to do some stamping. This panel in the center is going to have some stamped elements, and we're also going to stamp our uh, things for our banner. I've got my stamps right there, and my ink's ready to go. And we're going to start off with our center panel, and I am taking some nautical blue, which is a nice navy color, and I am going to stamp some stars from the Dragonflies Dancing set from Rubber Stamp Tapestry. And if you, you can get a couple um, stamps before you have to like reload, which gives you almost like you're using two different colors of ink, which I think is really pretty. So that's what that one looks like. It's one of those big ones that fills up a lot of space. Then we're going to take some pumpkins and I'm going to start off with uh, Potter's Clay with this really big pumpkin from Autumn's Elegance. And I will link everything down below. And then, uh, so since that one is like um, open, you know, it's just kind of like line artwork and stippling, I'm gonna go, I put that one first and then I'll fill in with these other two pumpkins which are solid and they're from Autumn Elegance, this one, and this one's from Itty Bitty Pumpkin Patch. So I love mixing and matching my stamp sets so that I can get the, you know, kind of best of both worlds here. So I can stamp over them because they are more of a solid image and then do another couple over there to fill in. And because I love to mix and match and I also like to ground my images, I'm gonna use this grass stamp and this is from Hyacinth. And I, which is probably like grasses and stems actually, but I keep all my peg stamps together and I ask myself, okay, what does this look like? What can I use this for? I'm gonna put some grasses down here in the pumpkin patch and just kind of stamp it across. And I can pull some in on the edges too. And don't be afraid to go in again if you feel like you want it thicker. And then to give this a little bit of a frame, what I'm going to do is I am going to ink the edges just with the just with the ink pads. I'm not grabbing any blending tools. We're gonna to keep this really fun and simple. I'm doing that same um, navy color up here at the top and there. It's all stamped. You get a beautiful little motif there and it's really easy. Oh, I almost forgot I wanted to put this bat flying around a few times. Oh my gosh, yeah, this is perfect uh, touch for a Halloween card. And then that's just going to adhere right in the center of our little gatefold card and that will go in the middle of our um, of our loaded bag. And of course you could put more stuff in it than I'm doing, you know, that's totally fine. The other stamping that we're gonna do, we might as well do it right now, is the, and you can just use the back of any, you know, pattern paper that you have around because we just need tiny little scraps. We are going to do the, uh, um, embellishments for the banner. So I'm using this little skull. I'm gonna zoom in because these are pretty small. Um, we're gonna do this. Whoa, a moth just flew by me. That was scary. Um, we're gonna do this skull a few times. 
And I'm also going to do this ghost a few times. And that moth is like in my studio lights, like banging against the uh, the uh, covers. <laughs> so I apologize if that sounds a little scary. And so there, now we have those. And then what I like to do is just use a little paper punch. Let me zoom out a little bit because the camera's having a hard time focusing. I'm just going to use it backwards. Let me just cover that so I don't land in the ink. Um, I use my punch upside down and boing. And I'm just going to punch all these out and I'll have those for embellishments. Now, if you wanted to be super fancy, you could do like some glossy accents on them and make them look like epoxy shapes. Just if you do that, make sure you're using an ink that is not going to react with that uh, media. Um, I don't have any of those glossy accents, so I'm not going to do that, but it would be a super cool idea if you wanted to do that. Okay, the only other embellishment I'm doing on the gatefold card, and you can add more, like I mentioned before, is just to put a little tassel on there. And um, these are just some pre-made ones. You could totally make your own tassel out of embroidery floss or whatever string that you have. Um, or you could just put a ribbon on there, but I just think that's kind of gives you a fun little like um, thing to pull it out of the bag with. So that's why I'm doing that. Just gonna put that through there and we can set that aside. Now for the bag portion, what we're going to do is we are gonna fold this part up like that and we are going to decorate this. And I'm just using this um, little panel that I cut out of one of those pattern papers. This paper had a lot of things going on, so um, I thought that that's decorative enough pretty much to put down there. Um, it's, it's interesting to look at, so I thought that would be good to throw right there. And I'm just going to use my adhesive runner here. And we're going to put that right. So this is the bottom of the bag. You could use a lunch bag too if you wanted to. Any Anything like that would be fine. That's going to be covered up anyway. I was just thinking maybe I should fold it up the other way. So, well, if I fold it up that way, yeah, I'll go this way just because it's going to fold that way. But you could you could do it anyway, obviously. And then I'm going to take some washi tape and make kind of like, um, I'm going to use this to close the bag up like that, but also to add a little decoration. Tear off just a little bit wider than the bag. And I'm going to go across the center of that. And it's a bummer because I'm covering, covering up some really cool stuff, but... Um, I'm going to open up the gussets on the side of the bag, those pleats, and I am going to just adhere the bottom flap of the bag, the foot of the bag, to the, one of those panels so I've got this nice big area for me to stick the gatefold card or any other goodies that I might want to add later. Um, this paper I thought was really cool because it has these little motifs on there, and I am going to grab this uh, scalloped circle and I am just going to punch that out. And I'm going to stick that down with some foam tape. And I also die cut some shapes while I was, um, when I was preparing here, I've got some bats and I have um, this spider. And this, you know, I only get to use these once a year because they're so specific, but they're a die cut and embossing folder. And I'll see if I can find them, but I, they were like two bucks in the like discontinued bin at Big Loss a few years ago. So I don't know if you can still find them or not, but I just really love this design. It's just a very, um, you know, basic Halloween design that is just, it's it's cool looking, but it's generic enough that like you can use it so many times. And I'm just putting some gelatos on it. You could use rub-ons or uh, metallic ink or whatever you have, but that just kind of brings out the uh, the detail from the embossing. But yeah, I, I never saw those again. They're like die cuts, but then they fit in an embossing folder. And I just had never, never really seen that other than that die. And it's kind of a bummer because they're, they're really cute. I also want to ink the edges of this to make it stand out a little bit more. Okay, and let's find our foam tape, which, haha, still got some left. Yeah, I'll know it's time to like um, probably end my channel when I run out of foam squares. <laughs> if I can keep this channel going as long as I still have foam squares in my stash, then this will probably be, uh, I'll be doing this into my 70s <laughs> or something. <laughs> the never ending foam tape stash. Of course, by then they might have biodegraded. I don't know. I don't think foam biodegrades very well, so. We'll see. Uh, so I'm going to put that kind of in the middle, I guess. And um, I've been using the zip dry glue lately quite a bit, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm going to use that for this embellishment. And I got a little tip for you when you're trying to glue something on an uneven, um, an uneven surface. Let's get all these little, let's get a little glue under these legs. Now, zip dry is kind of neat in the fact that 
Um, if you do get some glue seeping out, you can roll it off. So you don't have to be super careful with applying it. And then I find that if I take a stamp mount, I can kind of lay it down like that and it will hold the different points down with it, but it, the glue doesn't want to stick to the stamp mount, which is kind of neat. And then I have these little buttons that are really cute uh, that I didn't use in a project earlier. I've got cats and I've got spiders. Maybe I'll use a spider. I used a cat and the other one and then I drew some like, um, and then I drew some little like facial features on it with a gel pen, but it just looks pretty, pretty lame. So I think I'll just use a spider this time and not do anything too, too crazy. Um, and then I've got this doily here and I'm just going to feed that down in, in the pocket and see how that looks. I like the way that looks now because it's such a spacious open thing. I can, um, I can build my banner on top and whenever I glue anything on top, it'll stand out enough. So on my other card, I had darker, um, I had a darker banner and I thought it didn't stand out very well. So I decided to die cut these little banner pieces from a lighter piece of cardstock um, to see if maybe it would stand out a little bit better. But I am going to ink my edges here just to help give it a little bit more, um, a little bit more depth and dimension. So you can go ahead and do that to each of your of your banner pieces if you think it needs that. You can totally cut little triangles by hand. You don't have to have this die either. So, you know, do do whatever you want to do. Use what you have because that's what makes this really fun is that it's one of those kind of like use up your leftovers projects, I think anyway. And you can find all kinds of inspiration online if you search loaded envelope or loaded bag tutorial. There's people doing some really interesting stuff like it's for swaps and pen pal exchanges. And um, I believe the lady that invented the loaded envelope um, craze is Anna Torres. I do believe if I if I've got that wrong, I'll put the correction in the video description because I do like to credit ideas. I learned from it from my friends. Um, Cindy and Tracy, but, but, uh, you know, things, things spread on the internet like wildfire. So let's glue those down. Um, no, I'm not, I haven't been using the zip dry too much. And somebody had mentioned that they get, um, like blobs and yeah, I do kind of see that I get some kind of blobs and I'm trying, it's hard to get a tiny little amount out. So if anybody has any tips on using the zip dry, so you can just get a small, amount and doesn't want to kind of ball up on the ends of the uh, of the tip, please let me know because I too am struggling with that. It almost feels like the glue wants to come out from the side of the um, of the bottle, um, which I guess it's not that big of a deal since you can roll away the excess, but I, I don't know why that is. I don't, I think it came with a hole in it. I don't think I had to cut a, cut anything, but um, like to make the glue come out, but it does seem like it wants to come out like, or ball up at the end, maybe because it's just really thick. I'm not sure. It's like a gel type of glue. So I'm putting one of these little bats up here and the other one that I added the gelato to, I'm gonna put below the banner. And this does grab pretty quick so I can remove that I think. Put that guy right down there. And then all of our little punched guys here, I can figure out where I want those to go. I think I'd rather have fewer ghosts and more skulls, so I'm going to arrange them like that. You can never have too many skulls on a Halloween project. I like the colors in this one better, I think. Um, but you know, I think it, it can be really tricky to mix patterns, and I think this is a technique or a project that can help you with that because you know, if you're if you're using up like pattern paper or you've got um, a lot of different prints and embellishments to kind of integrate kind of can get over that fear of mixing patterns because you know the more the merrier this is kind of like something that should be kind of fun to take apart and look at and um and you know if you have some leftover embellishments you could you know split them up and put them in there as extra little goodies if you're sending them to somebody who scrapbooks or makes cards and then they've got like a little um a little extra treat that they can use on their next projects which is really kind of fun Okay, so now let's put the thing together. Of course, our glue is still drying, so we'll have to be a little careful. And here's our little gatefold there. It looks nice and neat and tidy. And that's gonna go inside of our bag. I should probably let this dry, but I'm gonna put this in the back, the back gusset there. And I think that just looks really cute 
I think it's really fun and really you could do this for any sort of um, any sort of holiday and you know you could put bookmarks in there if your friend was an avid reader um, put more embellishments and goodies in there um, if your friend's a scrapbooker or a card maker and you know you could even put some little candies in there like um, I don't know if they still make the Jolly Ranchers that are in the long bars like they used to but like airheads things like that I think it'd be really fun now as far as delivering this of course you could hand deliver it um, you could mail it uh, this isn't too lumpy, but you probably would want to put it in a padded mailer or a little box if you mail it. I don't know if an envelope would, would cut it, um, but definitely a padded mailer because it's really not that thick, but I just, I love the crinkly sound of the glass scene. I love how you can kind of peekaboo and see through it a little bit, and I just think this project is a lot of fun. And this is the other one that I did. Um, I really, I, I you can see what I mean about the banner being a little bit too dark and kind of um, getting lost from my, like that, that spiderweb doily there which is an old Stampin' Up product by the way but uh, you could spray color a doily black or if you have a doily die cut you could die cut it out of black cardstock you know be um be creative with the supplies you have this is such a fun little project and i think you know like i could cut the um these button this button sheet apart and i could stick that in as a little gifty i could throw in some extra you know things that i die cut as a present or a few extra you know of these doilies so that I could share those with a friend or a few tassels or you know just be creative with it I think it's a fun little pen pal uh, project or you know just a, a treat from another friend who crafts or just a friend who reads or just any friend who wouldn't like to get that in the mail I certainly would enjoy it thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this project and you want to find the stamps that I used check out the video description these are all from pegstamps.com and I will have a coupon code to save you 20% on stamps in the video description as well so uh, you'll want to check that out Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy crafting.